All right, welcome back and heading back into the Nicomachean Ethics. I'm Dr. Feist from St. Paul University, Book 6, Chapter 4. So remember, we've had all these different ways that the soul can possess truth. We've had those five different ways. Go back and review them. The previous video, though, I looked at episteme, which was all about uh, deducing and some a little bit on induction as well, but capacity to demonstrate. And of course, we tied in with episteme, with, uh, we tied episteme to the notion of nous, and that those two together allow us to do demonstrations in the, in the sort of scientific mode of de de demonstrating things and blocks re infinite regression. So if that's familiar to you, great, stick with me. If that's not familiar, pause this video and go back and watch the previous video, uh, two videos on chapter three to refresh your memory. Um, so now, the other aspects of grasping truth in addition to, uh, to the, uh, uh, the ones I just mentioned, that is episteme and nous, there were three others, and the three of them were techne, phronesis, and sophia. Not doing sophia here, what I'm looking at is a little bit of, uh, of, of techne and phronesis, which is again kind of a practical wisdom, that's in the next video. Uh, Chapter 5, but Chapter 4, we're dealing with techne, a little bit on making. And Chapter uh, 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 chapter 5 will be with phronesis, dealing with actions. All right, so we're dealing with things that could be otherwise, these are transient truths, so it's that calculative part of the soul that is grasping, remember, in possession of transient truths. So again, it's not opinion or belief, right? Because opinion and belief doesn't actually possess truth the way that these modes of the soul, these dispositions of the soul, are actually in possession of truth. All right, so these are, I, I'm, I'm using the term like making things for techne and for phronesis, I'm talking about actions. So we'll talk more about real, necessarily human things of, of actions. Here we're going to look at another human activity of techne. And remember, techne was translated in a variety of ways. It could be translated as skill, art, technical expertise. Um, there's a variety of them, but those seem to be, uh, for the most part, uh, used in the translations. But it is a kind of technical know-how, right? You know how to make things. So what I want to do is distinguish between making things and actions. Talk about actions later. So think about when we make things, right? Humans make all kinds of things. So making things, right? Building stuff. We do this like we, we do this all the time. This, but we have you know technicians. They're technical skills. They know how to make things. Um, and and I'm not saying anything fancy here. Just like stuff like cars, you know, houses. I mean, well, cars are pretty fancy, and so are houses. But they're not unusual things by any uh, means. And cars and houses could be otherwise, right? You can build them, as we know. They can be built in all different ways. Look at the history of cars. Look at the history of, of housing. There's all different ways to, to do these things. A car could have been bigger, smaller, more power, less power, or, or not made at all. Right? Same thing with houses. Big, small, not really what we would always recognize as a house, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So lots of variation. So could be otherwise. So lots of variation here. Okay. So, well, that's gets putting it a little bit forward. Uh, uh, so we uh, Aristotle distinguishes, of course, between making and acting, and we'll look at acting a little bit later. So when we make things like cars, houses. Um, and we, we have a certain pattern, there's a certain kind of rationality to it, so it's not all random. So there is indeed, it's a human activity of making stuff, you're, you're employing reason. So let's look at a, a, at, at, a, at a simple example, which I'm going to use to try and bring out some of Aristotle's points to make uh, this notion of, of this distinction between making things and actions a little bit clearer. Let's look at the making of a, an object like uh, a, a, a loaf of bread. Just something very simple, very straightforward. Not too difficult to make a loaf of bread. Maybe lots of you haven't uh, baked bread, but it's not difficult. A little flour, a little water, hot oven, pretty basic salt, yeast, 
pretty basic ingredients go into that, and uh, some pretty basic activities in order, and then you get a loaf of bread out of the deal. So first, as Aristotle would say, you know, you need a, a person to make the loaf, so you need some kind of agent, right? So you need a baker, not necessarily a baker, but a baker will usually make certainly a better loaf of bread than I'm going to make. And um, so you need, uh, uh, they, because loaves of bread, they don't come into existence on their own, and they're not made by nature. So this is a definite human product. So we're dealing with a human activity. Humans make bread. You don't just find bread in nature or that is pre-existent to humans or whatnot. It's not like that. We do it. Um, and, of course, uh, bread doesn't reproduce, right? you know, they, like, like living creatures, so it's not a living object. It doesn't make copies of itself. It doesn't have a soul in that sense. So it's a human product, right? And it's a, a product of rationality. So there is some reason into it, because not just any process with the basic ingredients of uh, bread, like flour and water and yeast and all that, will produce a loaf of bread, right? And so we, when that happens, we say it's a failure. Oh, I didn't get what I wanted out of the deal. So, uh, so, so the bread doesn't come into existence on its own. It could be made differently, right? A loaf of bread, you know, it could have been a loaf of uh, 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 pumpernickel. It could have been a loaf of rye. It could have been a baguette, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So there's all kinds of possibilities. So, so the first possibility is existence, non-existence, and then once existence, shall we say, the flip the switch in favor of existence, you have possibilities of different kinds of bread. Um, third, when you start getting into, okay, well, which kind of bread? Well, then you're talking about a recipe, right? Which recipe are you are you following? You know, follow one recipe, you get rye, follow, when, and of course you change the ingredients too, so the recipe will stipulate certain common ingredients like flour and, or, and water or yeast or something, but there might be other things that you add that differentiates the recipe, so you differentiate the product. So one recipe gives you rye, one recipe gives you a, a loaf of pumpernickel, and so on, and so on, and different baking uh, uh, temperatures, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, and all that will give you different textures and things like that. So, so you've got coming into existence, what type, uh, uh, what's the recipe, and also think about the process, right, as, uh, as, you know, as you're watching, right, okay, you're looking at the bread and you're going, oh, look at it bake in there, and let's say you've got an oven with a glass door, or you're probably cooking in, if you were baking in aerosol all the time, it would have been sort of a furnace, and you would look into it, and uh, you would see the, 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 uh, the, the dough in there, is in the process of being baked, right? So is it really a loaf, right? So it's not, not really. In a sense, it's like it's just the dough in there, and you're waiting for the final product, which is the loaf. So in other words, it, for, for Aristotle, if you're trying to get your head around what he's saying, is that the loaf of bread is really present. OK, so it's got first its notion of existence. As we talked about, you need an, an agent to bring it in. It's uh, there, and then there's the type, and then, of course, you have the the idea of uh, the emergence of the loaf afterwards. So it emerges, or is present after the process, right? So it's like, oh, it's done. Now I have a loaf of bread, right? Before that, it's not really a loaf of bread in Aristotle's view. Um, so the, 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 the flour, the water, and all that, when you're mixing it all up and you're kneading it and doing all those things, is that a loaf of bread? Well, it's a potential loaf of bread, yeah, but don't forget, uh, 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 you know, a potential X is not the same as, as X. Um, think about, uh, for instance, uh, 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 Prince Charles is the potential king of England, yeah, but... Uh, He's not treated exactly as if he were the King of England when he travels. He's not treated identically. The Queen now sometimes asks him to stand in, but he's not actually the King, right? So, so a potential X is not, a, not equivalent to a full-blown X. And of course, that can be very problematic to spell out the relationships between what exactly makes something a potential X versus another thing. Uh, a, a potential X. So the identity conditions and the differential conditions for uh, potential objects is notoriously complicated and uh, can be contested. But Aristotle 
is being very, I, th I think, very clear about this, that uh, a potential x is simply not one, not the x itself. So a, a potential loaf, right, is not the actual loaf of bread. The, the, the potential loaf becomes a loaf of bread and emerges after the process is completed. Okay. All right. So there's a, a number of factors to keep in mind. So with this simple thing, this baking, this is a techne, right? So this, this notion of making a loaf of bread, that's an example of your, your techne, right? As, as in, a, uh, as in, in a, a kind of skill, right? This is uh, the artistry, the art, as we sometimes say, you know, the art of baking or, or whatnot. Um, it's, a, it's a certain kind of skill and it's ordered and it's, it's, it's important to do things in the right order and change little things and you'll get different products. Change them too much and you won't get a loaf of bread anymore. You'll get a, you know, some, some charred up dough or whatever. Or it's not, it's not baked properly. And then we would say, well, it's not really a loaf of bread. It's still too much like dough. All right, with this simple, so with this simple discussion. Okay, so my loaf of bread as an example of a techne. So there you go. That's a simple example. A simple example, again, of a techne, of making things. So let's just try and, and, and generalize. So now let's generalize. And when we do, we go to here. So if I look at it just in general, when I say something is made, right, like the loaf of bread or a house or whatnot, you have certain ingredients, shall we say. Here's the general recipe for making. So logically, X is made means that there's some kind of an agent. That's important, right? Because we're, this is basically, this is us, right? Because there's rationality involved. So when Aristotle talks about agents, he's talking really about us, right? Rational agents. Unless he maybe once in a while talks about gods or whatever, but by and large, he's talking about human beings and uh, the notion of rational creatures, right? And that's us. Animals, non-human animals don't have those properties of soul. Some properties of ours, yes, once again, we're not radically, completely, totally differently, differently hooked up or constructed, but we're not identical with either because we have this rational part. So there's an agent distinct from whatever is being made. Now you might think, well, isn't that in all cases? No, it's not. As a matter of fact, when things in actions, just to give you a little bit of foreshadowing, actions really are going to be when the ends are actually part of the sort of the, the agent. So there's a much closer link here. Here, making things is really when the thing that's made is external. So there's an agent distinct from X. The agent then, well, what does it do? Activates a, a rational process, that is, it's rule governed, right? Just like we saw here, that there are recipes or whatever, that there are different kinds of processes. There's a general kind of process of making bread. Yeah, you know, you mix things up, knead them up, throw them in the oven. But there's also uh, some specific smaller parts of the rational process that will then cause the thing to ramify. You get baguettes over here and uh, uh, rye bread over there, et cetera, et cetera. So, but nonetheless, the important thing is, is that you have a rational process that's involved. That's making. And last but not least, which picks up on the distinct notion, distinctness idea uh, in the first bullet here, is that Completing the rational process. So the rational process comes to an end, right? And the end, right, so it, it finishes. It has to be finished. So in other words, the end is in the goal. The end of the rational process is outside the rational process, right? It's a product. So it results, what is it? You complete the rational process, it's finished, and the production of, of X is the result that is actually, shall we say, in not just the, the, the termination, but that's the end, like the goal. So there is the notion of the process and the goal are external. Right? You have the process, then you have the goal. And in that sense, they're external because they're separated, you, you could say, by time. Not by much, of course. Um, but nonetheless, this is the whole notion of making, according to Aristotle. And that's really dealing with techne. So 
It's not that it's it's not that difficult, I think, but it's it's clear that this isn't quite what Aristotle's talking about with phronesis, because think about it. You, you could be an excellent baker, a top-notch baker, and um, remember what we're what we're always concerned about here in the Nicomachean Ethics, and that's eudaimonia. So, could you be someone who has great technical skill and not have eudaimonia? Absolutely. As a matter of fact, it could even be uh, uh, said that if you have too much technical skill, that might take you away from trying to learn about eudaimonia. Maybe, but nonetheless, they're clearly separate. So the point is, is that uh, the notion of techne is a mo is a, is a is a is a disposition of soul in the grasping of truth, right? But it's not the same thing as what we need in order to complete the character virtues. So you don't complete your character virtues by learning a very specific techne or a very specific skill, right? So in this sense, techne is. Some people say, well, why does Aristotle talk about it? Well, it's a good contrast, right? So when he's going to go talk about phronesis in that sort of sense of practical wisdom, it's not about somebody who can uh, bake bread. It's, uh, it's somebody who has maybe, you know, knows maybe when to bake it or, or not necessarily, or maybe what kind in advance to serve to what kinds of guests. So it's not just, it, it's not, just simply having a very discrete skill. Again, that is something that Aristotle agrees in, 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 a, in, a, in a city is extremely important to have bakers, but he's not talking about that. This is just the realm of techne. So that, I hope, clarifies the notion of making techne, technical skills, artistry. What we now want to look at is what's really important for augmenting, because we're trying to flesh out the notion of virtue, and we left off with character virtue, we need the special kind of virtue, the intellectual virtue of phronesis, which is going to help us, and Sophia will play a role too, of course, in fleshing out this notion of right reason so that we can get our character virtues fully in order. So, so phronesis is going to be something about reasoning, yeah, but not this kind. It's going to be more of a, of a reasoning that's going to help you determine, you know, how courageous, what, what courage will look like in a given context, and all these other kinds of virtues that Aristotle talked about, being means with respect to an individual on extremes. How do we do that kind of reasoning to figure that out? What's the right reason that's going to allow us to hit the mean? Well, the right reasoning is going to be a kind of reasoning that works in all aspects of life, and it's not like this, it's not like bacon bread is going to help you be a, a happier person, but phronesis, phronesis will. And that's another step on the road to eudaimonia. So stay tuned for that.